Welcome to the Daily Race. We're off to a great start today because, well, the sun is up and uh, got breath in our lungs and we're going to take a step forward together. Uh, we are in Acts chapter 20 and uh, Paul is, is heading back to Jerusalem on his missionary journey. Uh, he's, he's felt led by the Holy Spirit that it's time to wrap up his travels. Uh, he needs to go back, uh, report to the, um, just give a report to the, the church there and uh, get ready for what is next. And Honestly, he doesn't know what's next exactly. He just knows that it's, it's time to go back. The Holy Spirit is telling him to go back to Jerusalem. Now, along the way, uh, he wants to meet with the uh, elders from Ephesus, uh, the church that he planted there. He established these elders to, to lead the church. Um, so he has them meet them. Uh, he has them join him along the way for, for a meeting. And, and this is what he says in, in Acts 20, uh, verse... Uh, let's pick it up here. Uh, 18. It says, When they arrived, he declared... You know from the day that I set foot in the province of Asia until now, I have done the Lord's work humbly and with many tears. I have endured the trials that came to me from the plots of the Jews. I never shrank back from telling you what you needed to hear, either publicly or in your homes. I have had one message for Jews and Greeks alike, the necessity of repenting from sins and turning to God and having faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. That's, that's it. That's that, the whole gospel in a, in a, a sentence there. It says, and now I am bound by the Spirit to go to Jerusalem. I don't know what awaits me, except that the Holy Spirit tells me in city after city that jail and suffering lie ahead. But my life is worth nothing to me unless I use it for finishing the work assigned to me by the Lord Jesus, the work of telling others the good news about the wonderful grace of God. Wow, what an what a powerful statement. My life is worth nothing to me unless I use it for finishing the work assigned to me by the Lord Jesus. He, he knows what his mission is. He knows what he was saved for. He knows his specific calling on his life, even though he knows it's going to cost him. You know, I, I titled today's uh, Daily Race here, When Obedience Leads to Pain. That, that's a difficult thing to deal with, right? But when we typically think of obedience, when we're doing the right thing, we think that, that that should lead us away from pain, that that should protect us from pain. And in, honestly, in many, the majority of the time, that's true. God gives us his rules and his boundaries to provide for us, to protect us, uh, to keep us from harm. If we live life God's way, uh, that is the best possible way to live. But, but God sometimes, asks us to do things that are going to be difficult for us, it'd be pain for us, because he has a bigger picture in mind. That what's on the other side of that pain is, is, is worth the cost. I mean, that's the life of Jesus, right? Jesus came down here on earth and went through incredible pain for the benefit of others. Oh, Paul talks about Jesus Christ didn't have obedience. He humbly submitted himself and had obedience. Obedience to the cross. Obedience to the most excruciating pain that, that one can imagine. So as we look at our lives here, I think so often we try to avoid difficult situations, avoid pain at, at, at any cost. That pain equals like disobedience. Pain equals outside of God's plans. And that's just not simply true. That, that's not the example we see here in the scripture. And, and it's not just a sign that, that we're being, um, that just bad things are happening to us. Sometimes God puts us through difficult situations. How many times have we seen the disciples here get thrown in prison, get beaten up? But through that, in these passages here in Acts, jailers come to repent. Uh, movements of God begin because of the miracle that's seen. So often God uses pain to bring about change in our life. Not just in us pushing through to something more difficult, but God often brings people, pain into people's lives to prepare them for what's happening next. And I love this story, the parable of, of the soils that Jesus tells about the four different types of soil. There's the good soil, there's the rocky soil, there's a the hard soil, there's a the soil with weeds, and it's all about how they receive the word. And the question, how, does, how do we turn hard soil into good soil so that they'll hear the, the, the message of Jesus? Well, we can't do anything with that. And we can't turn hard soil into soft soil. Only God can. But how does God do that? Has God turned hard soil into soft soil? He often sends a storm. So the storm to, to soften up that soil. Pain is, is part of, 
of the human condition. We live in a fallen world. We go through difficult things. And what I would encourage you today is that when, when the painful times come, when the difficult times come, don't view it as where has God gone, but God, what are you trying to teach me here? What are you trying to do in and through this? What, what do you want me to, is this a time for me to persevere? Is this, is this something that I'm not going to understand until later? Paul, in this passage, he says this. He says, I don't know what awaits me, except that the Holy Spirit tells me in city after city that jail and suffering lie ahead. Paul, Paul was obedient, even though he knew there was pain, and he also didn't know what the payoff was. We can push through pain if we know the payoff, right? I mean, that's, I can't say this personally, but from my, what my wife has told me, childbirth, right? Childbirth. You can push through the pain knowing that there's a beautiful child at the end of that. There, there's a purpose to the pain. Sometimes we don't know the purpose to the pain, but we have to trust anyways. That's the example we see of Paul here. He doesn't know the purpose yet. He just, he sees the pain ahead, but he trusts. He trusts in the goodness of God. He trusts in God's track record, how he's helped him in the past. He trusts in God's character, the way that he's worked in other people's lives. He's, he's had a front row seat to what he's done with, with Peter and, and what he's done with all the other apostles and, and church leaders that he's worked with. So he, he's confidently stepping into this difficult situation, knowing that he believes God has his best interests and the best interests of the church at large in mind. What an incredible amount of faith. If, if we can learn one thing from, from Paul, I think this is, this is one of the, this is a great nugget to take away. We can learn a bunch of stuff from Paul, but I think it's a great nugget to take away. That, that trust, that faith, knowing that even though you see a difficult situation ahead, God, I'm going to trust you in this difficult situation. I know you're going to do something through this. I, I don't even know what it is. That, that is next level. All right, let's go ahead and pause here and let, let's pray. Get our day started together. Lord, we love you and we thank you for, um, God, we, we always thank you for all the good things in our life. God, the blessings, the, the provision, the protection. And God, we continue to, to pray for those things. God, we ask that you, had, you, you told us to, to come to you and ask for our daily bread um, to, to provide for us and protect for us. But God, we also know that there are going to be some difficult things. In fact, we, I know, God, there are difficult things people here on the daily race are going through today. So, some obstacles, some trials some physically painful circumstances, some emotionally painful circumstances. God, I pray for endurance. God, I pray for courage. God, I pray for, for uh, the ability to, to push through. God, I pray that, that on the other side of this pain, God, you will use it for your honor and glory. God, I pray that maybe even today you'll give them a glimpse of, of what, uh, what some of that joy that's going to come, a, a glimpse of, of some of that purpose here today to help us as we persevere. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. All right, well, hey, I hope you have a great, great rest of the day. I look forward to seeing you 24 hours from now right back here on The Daily Race. Love you guys.